Think of a time when there weren't 42 different superhero movies coming out every month. Can't think of anything, can you? In 2005, Fantastic Four, Batman Begins, and Shark Boy and Lava Girl were the only superhero movies worth talking about. But there's one movie that lurks beneath these films, a movie that is perhaps better than all three combined. Well, Sharkboy and Lava Girl kinda slaps though. And Chris Evans as someone who isn't Mr. America is a period of time we all forget about. But back to the script. A movie so good that it's better than most superhero slop we get nowadays. The film I'm talking about, which you've seen in the thumbnail, is Sky High. Disney doesn't make these kind of movies anymore and it's sad. Personally, I hate Disney, but they've produced movies that slap harder than Marshall Erickson. We have our main guy, Will Stronghold. He lives in a world where there are a lot of superheroes, but his parents are the most popular heroes around. Together, they share Superman's abilities. His father is super strong, which makes him practically indestructible, and his mother can fly and kick ass. Together, they're called the Commander and Jetstream. Uh, I don't know about you, but Jetstream sounds like another way of saying you really have to pee. Instead of working as a journalist like Superman, these two work as real estate agents. While they're saving the world from evil, everyone sees them as superheroes, but all Will sees is his dad in tidy whities Will, we're not even two minutes into the movie and you're already making this pretty weird. If you keep acting up, we're gonna have to have a little chat. The twist of this movie is that even though you have superhero parents, that doesn't mean you're going to have superpowers. His parents don't know that he doesn't have any superpowers yet, so he hides this by trying to lift weights but is held back by his build. This dude's built like the stick bug from a bug's life. He's built like the Applejack cinnamon stick. This dude's built like Flat Stanley. <laughs> he hears his dad call out for him, so he adds more plates to his bench so he can impress him and fakes doing 200 reps. Whoa, 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 whoa. His dad is Kurt Russell from The Thing and Big Trouble in Little China. Kurt calls him weak by saying low weights, high rep, and tells Will to get ready for school. He wants Will to work with his parents and fight crime and save the world. Then drops a major mood killer saying that he's not invincible and is going to die one day. What the fuck, Disney? The commander says, think fast, and murders his child. Now we're introduced to Will's best friend, Layla. She's what a hippie would be if they had superpowers. She's basically mother nature and has the powers of miracle growth. The mom, Jetstream, talks about how fast they grew up and that it feels like it was just yesterday when they were skinny dipping in the kiddie pool. Disney, I thought Nickelodeon had it bad, but you're acting pretty. I know you've had a dark past, but I didn't think it was gonna be this recent. The commander and Jetstream leave because there's big trouble downtown. Oh, big trouble, get it? Ah, my audience is too young, just like my girlfriend. Wait, wait, wait. Jetstream gives the commander uppies so they can defeat the Iron Giant attacking the city and he takes out the eyeball to keep as a souvenir. Will and Layla get on the school bus and Will asks if this is the bus to Sky High and the bus driver tells him to shut up because he wants to keep Sky High's identity as closeted as possible. Kind of like, ah, uh, you already know where I'm going with this. He asks what Will's name is and finds out he's the commander and Jetstream's son and starts fangirling. The bus driver tells some kids to move to the back and that tonight will be the night. Girl stands her ground and doesn't want to get up. The other kid says he needs room for his poop Bear, and Will's quick thinking blocks the incoming shipping attack and friend zones Layla. Layla freshly rejected Williams, tags along, and says he's like her brother. Oof! I bet she's from Alabama or 1800 Britain. Am I right, guys? Both of them are taking mass amounts of damage. Jonah Hill from Megamind tries to flirt with Layla, but gets turned down. The bus driver, Ron Wilson, sniffs some snort and drives like a maniac, leading to him driving off an unfinished highway, kind of like in Trick or Treat. Instead of all the kids dying in that movie, let me know if you want a video on that, the bus sprouts wings like a butterfly and soars its way into the flying high school. As they're walking into school, a bully with super speed runs around in circles, stopping everyone in their tracks. Mr. Fantastic comes stretching his his way down the stairs with his stereotypical Fred Figglehorn haircut and a girl saves the day. Her name is Gwen. She is the student body president and Will falls in love with her. Layla, on the other hand, starts to get a bit jealous. They all head into the auditorium to see whether they will be a superhero or a sidekick. Now we have motherfucking Ash Williams from Evil Dead as their coach. This movie keeps getting better and better. He informs all the students that his name is Coach Boomer. Okay, Boomer should have stuck with the name Ash. Sounds so much cooler. He's going to be the one determining if they're a cool kid or an emo. Mom, it's not a phase kid and damn he's got some serious morning breath he calls on fregly and he turns out to be the thing from fantastic four he drops a car on him as one does and i just want to say if he didn't catch this car mr boomer over here would have been crushed with him up next we have a glow stick and he's immediately considered a Take it. but in my opinion it wasn't a fair trial they didn't even try to snap him up next we have this goober who could turn into slime kind of gross that he'd go hard on etsy in 2016 though let's speed run through these next couple that sounds wrong this guy has six arms not forearms from ben 10 this girl can turn into a yoga ball, this kid has acid spit, and this guy can morph into anybody. Hey yo, Bruce Campbell. That's right, I'm addressing you by your real name. What the was that? That's a kid's ass you just slapped. Watch it, mister. I got the registry pulled up. The emo chick can turn herself into a guinea pig. Layla gets called up and she says 
she's a pacifist and doesn't want to do anything. Will gets saved by the bell, and now we're off to lunch. While Will is eating, he has someone straight out of Umbrella Academy constantly staring at him. His name is Warren Peace. Warren Peace. He's pissed off at Will because the commander put his dad in jail. Later, Will bumps into Gwen and she says she needs a freshman for the homecoming committee and asks Will out on a date. Whoa, 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 whoa. Gwen, a senior, or in other words, an 18 year old, is asking out a freshman, a 14 to 15 year old. Disney, what did I say earlier? Now it's Will's turn up at bat and he has nothing to show for Coach Boomer so he drops a car on him. That's the entire movie, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. He heads to the nurse's office and gets told there's a chance that he's never going to receive superpowers. ruh -ro. Even though he has two super parents, that doesn't make him a trust fund child. The same situation happened with the bus driver. Damn. That's so sad. Alexa, play Despacito. Will goes home to talk to his dad and he shows him his secret sanctum, also known as the Man Cave Bromart, and Will is not allowed to bring anyone in here under any circumstances. Will gets shown his dad's proudest possession, which is Royal Payne's pacifier. Kurt met Jetstream while beating them up, and that, Will, is how he met your mother. The eyeball souvenir turns on and we see these two evil doodads peeking through. Later, Will's sitting on the roof in ugh, 2000s fashion. Skirt, jeans, flip-flops, ugh. At school, they're learning how to be a- Take it! Will learns that his teacher used to work with his dad and the teacher gets butt hurt that his dad never brought him up. Womp womp. He then asks if his mom ever mentions him and she never has. What a sad little man. At Will's Dungeon and Dragons game, his dad shows up and he's dressed up like one of those freedom flavored popsicles. In the kitchen, he's making a sandwich and I don't know if you know this, but I make a cameo in this movie. Right here, you can see that I'm Wonder Bread. Will walks in and tells his dad that he's a sidekick, which in this world is basically like coming out of the closet. Dad, I'm not a hero, I'm gay. Take it! Like the stereotypical homophobic guy, he gets mad and everything goes boing. Willa says he's proud to be himself and the dad says, nuh-uh, you're gonna be what I want you to be. What month are we in? You better change your attitude. He goes to the man cave bromart because he's pissed and damn, I feel bad for the mom. The next day at school, the bullies make Will trip and spill all of his lunch on he gets pissed and starts shooting fireballs at him. He really needs to get his eyes checked. He's missing so many shots. Will finally discovers he has super strength and throws him back into Hot Topic. He gets back up and tries to fight him again, but just gets clowned on. Both of them get in trouble and are thrown into a detention room that suppresses their superpowers. Later, Will busts open the door like, are you an insane? His parents are pissed and understandably so. He extinguished the kid at school. His dad brings him to the man cave Bromart and reveals that he isn't mad at him. Will and Kurt hug and this is the first time his dad can hug him without holding back. Damn, this movie just got really sad. The eyeball is still stalking them and they learn that Will has his father's power. The next day at school, Will gets transferred to the hero class because he's no longer a Take it! Megamind is assigning a project and pairs Will with Gwen, the adult. The project is to create a freeze ray. Gwen, still an adult, uses her technopathic powers to zip together at the freeze ray, and the teacher immediately grabs the gun and busts a cap into one of the kids who failed the assignment. Imagine if that was what school actually was. Okay, class, today you have to build the Glock 19. Good job, Will. Unfortunately, you forgot to attach the safety. At lunch, Will's friends get bullied and the heroes don't let them sit at his lunch table, so Will makes up for it by inviting Layla out to dinner that night. In gym class, they're playing a game where they have to save a mannequin from a bunch of blade traps and the two bullies. Will gets paired up with War and Peace and gets his eggs scrambled because the flash is just too quick for him. Will does a ground pound, sending Mr. Fantastic into the air, which ends with him being tied up to a pole. The flash runs around Warren so fast that it gets rid of the oxygen in the air, leaving him to be eliminated in front of a crowd of people. Guys, this is about to be murder, right? Will grabs the speedster and sends him flying towards his boy toy. He grabs Warren and chucks him at the citizen, making those two the first freshmen to ever win at Save the Citizen. Will goes home and sees Gwen already at his house. Kinda creepy, not gonna lie. Don't know how she found his address. I guess she's on her stalker arc. She joins them for dinner, which leaves Layla all alone at the restaurant. Gwen asks Will's parents to go to the homecoming dance and be the guests of honor, and they're delighted to go. Back to Layla, it turns out Warren works at the restaurant, and he's able to sniff out that Layla is in love with Will. Meanwhile, Will is walking still an adult Gwen home and she asks him out to homecoming. There is a big age gap between these two. Will meets up with Layla the next day and she's ready to tell him the truth, but Will just goes on and on about Gwen asking him out to homecoming. She retaliates by saying Warren invited her to homecoming just to piss him off. That night, Gwen throws a party at Will's house without his permission and she keeps gaslighting Will, telling him that everything she is doing is good. She wants to be alone with Will, so he takes her to the man cave Bromart, then the pacifier gets stolen. Ooh, what a guess. When Layla stops by, Gwen tells her the worst shit to ever 
never tell someone and she never wants to talk to Will again. When Will asks what she said to her, Will breaks up with Gwen and she gets so butthurt about a kid dumping her. Will ends the party and his parents show up to end it as well. He calls Layla to let her know that he's going to the restaurant so he can apologize and runs into Warren who dumps the beans on him letting him know that she liked him. Later, Will's looking through his dad's yearbook since he left to go off to homecoming and notices that Gwen is in his yearbook holding the pacifier. Realizing the pacifier is now stolen, he calls his bus driver and Gwen thanks his parents for showing up to homecoming and reveals that she's a royal pain in the ass. The villain from the flashback. I bet she's a Gemini. She shoots the commander and he does the chest launch that David Hasselhoff does in the Spongebob movie to try and deflect it, but in the end he turns into a little baby. She shoots up the homecoming dance and turns everyone into little turds. Just take it! Vent and his glow stick powers turn out to be pretty useful. Will shows up to the function and sees the glow, so he frees them all from the vent. The bullies, who I guess are now villains, show up and Will roadrunners his ass out of there to meet up with Gwen. And it turns out that when the pacifier got destroyed, she turned into a baby and wait, hold up. Multiple things are going on here. First of all, isn't that the pacifier? How did it get destroyed if it's right there? And second of all, ew! If you're 20, then get transformed into a baby. Are you still 20? Is Gwen's superpower being a 40 year old who made out with a 40 14 year old? Take it! She drags him back into the school for the final battle and she gets tossed around like a rag doll. She flies up into the disco ball and turns into dead mouse. Meanwhile, Layla uses her powers to Jumanji the cheerleaders and how is she not a hero? She's basically poison ivy. She finds out that the royal pain in the ass is going to make Sky High fall to the ground. Sky High? <laughs> please. More like ground low. Will gets sucker punched out of the building and is falling to his death. Ah, uh, guys, he's right behind me, isn't he? Will finally finds out he can fly and hits the girl. Will, I know she's evil and everything, but that's not okay. Apologize. Thank you. Gwen pretending to be dead activates her anti-uppies on the building and it starts to fall. Will jumps out of the building and picks up the school before it was able to hit a house that Tom Kenny, the voice of SpongeBob, and Jill Talley, the voice of Plankton's computer wife, Karen, just purchased. I bet Plankton's sitting in the hotel cup chair right now. Will returns to the school and helps everyone go back to their correct age. The commander gives the Heroes of the Year award to the <laughs> and lets them know that they have his seal of approval to be called heroes. The pisser, sorry, Jetstream, gives the teacher a nice smooch. Something was definitely going on behind Kurt's back when they were younger. The movie ends with Will and Layla kissing in the sky and leaving us with an absolute banger of a line. In the end, my girlfriend became my arch enemy, my arch enemy became my best friend, and my best friend became my girlfriend. What a masterpiece of a movie. Disney, what are you doing? Live action Mufasa? Live action Lion King wasn't even praised like the original. Go back to these bangers. Sky High, Spy Kids, Shark Boy and Lava Girl. We need more movies that start with S's. We need to bring back that early 2000s feeling in movies. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't seen my last video, I make a tier list and rank all the movies that I watched in May. Thank you for 5,949 subscribers, and I wish my high school was this cool.